सो दिस इज अ केस ऑफ इलेवन ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल शी प्रेजेंटेड टू मी इन ओपीडी विद दिस न्यू ऑन एक्सर्शन क्लास टू एंड इंक्रीजिंग साइनोसिस ऑन इन्वेस्टिगेशन वी फाउंड आउट दैट शी इज हैविंग सीवियर पलमरी स्टेनोसिस सो एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट शी वॉज हैविंग साइनोसिस बिकॉज देयर वॉज एंड अ स्मॉल ए एस डी बिग एंड द ए एस डी वॉज शंटिंग राइट टू लेफ्ट बिकॉज ऑफ इंक्रीज आर वी प्रेशर and that was due to because of the patient's patient was having severe ps so this is a injection in ra 40 view with the pigtail catheter in c2 catheter course from femoral vein to ivc to ra to rv at the rv apex taking injection showing rv cavity this is a location of the tricuspid valve here comes ra and it opacifies the branch pulmonary artery you can see there is a significant pulmonary stenosis here so here one thing is more important like in this shot the clearing of contrast is very slow in the injection that itself suggests that patient's rv was having at least moderate dysfunction just show the location of the wall once after freezing trying to cause this is a jr catheter in the rv cavity i have taken o32 j tip thermo wire the crossing as expected was little difficult it took at least 10 minutes for me to cross now you are crossing the wire from the rv cavity to the pulmonary artery across the pulmonary valve to pulmonary artery so this is a long fluoro saved so the difficulty in crossing the wire is mainly due to first of all the rv cavity will be very much as it is as the patient is having moderate to severe dysfunction the rv was very much dilated to stabilize catheter in that cavity and try to push the wire is extremely challenging and apart from that on echo wise this patient uh, effective orifice of the pulmonary valve was just 2 to 3 mm this i had cross so this is a whisper wire across the pulmonary valve into distal rpa so in these kind of cases we generally do graded dilatation because if suddenly you over dilate and if it gets over dilated patient lung will flood and she will have pulmonary edema so on the whisper wire first i have taken coronary balloon this is a coronary balloon dilatation so it was difficult to stabilize it was slipping ahead again and again so so this is the coronary balloon, balloon across the pulmonic valve yeah yeah so after that i have exchanged that uh, whisper wire to exchange the whisper wire to a stiffer wire i have taken the multi purpose catheter on the same guide wire on the same guide wire now i have exchanged the wire this is amplex or super stiff wire across the pulmonary valve into distal lpa now on this amplex wire this is 14 into three balloon tie shake balloon across the pulmonary valve and now we are trying to dilate it her annulus was 20 mm so i had taken coronary balloon followed by which 6 and 8 tie shake now this is 14 tie shake so we are dilating it see this severe stenosis balloon is getting inflated
So when you inflate the balloon, the balloon is just midway the pulmonic wall. You try to stabilize in midway, at the midway, to get an effective result. But it is very difficult in cases of uh, severe pulmonary stenosis where patient is having RV dysfunction too. It tends to slip ahead. So how many times you inflate the balloon? One good effective inflation is more than enough for pulmonary valve. You see here also it was uh, while trying to stabilize it was moving ahead. So again this is a bigger balloon. So this was 18 Taishik. Now it's almost midway and you can see the dilatation was proper. So this is the 18 into 4 Taishik balloon. Earlier you did was uh, 14. 14. Now this is 18. So full inflation was done. Now you see the RV is contracting well. There is a good amount of flow opacifying the branch PAs. There is some component of sub infundibular stenosis that will take time. We will keep her on beta blocker and follow up. Hopefully she, re she will recover well. So, cases of pulmonary stenosis where we do balloon dilate are generally not challenging. But this case was challenging considering she was a case of severe PS with cyanosis and grade 2 clubbing means the cyanosis was long to have patient for a patient to have clubbing means the cyanosis must be long standing which more than one or two years. So she should have been intervened at least not infancy that at the at least at the four to five years of age but she was not intervened. She presented to me at the age of 11 years, so it was a prolonged standing severe PS leading to severe RV dysfunction, severe RV dysfunction increasing the RV diastolic pressure that was causing shunting across the small ASD right to left and that causes desaturation and in long standing cases cyanosis. So on table procedure wise these patients are prone for VT, they can have VT because RV is dysfunctional first of all, second. After dilatation, they can have pulmonary edema too because their lung is not, has not tolerated this much amount of blood since birth. So suddenly they are getting a good amount of QP. So they might go into pulmonary edema and some of these patients might be syndromic also. So their post-op outcome generally is very bad. So in this case, the ASD, what you did for the ASD? I have not done anything because ASD was small. Because of increased RV diastolic pressure, it was stretched. So it may close spontaneously. Also. It will not close, but it will not, I don't think it will need a ASD device closure. Because that will not cause uh, that much of flow to cause RA and RV dilatation once this PS portion is sorted out. <laughs>